Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. A viewer recently asked me about uh, details regarding a gamma match for Yagi antennas. He said he'd never seen any good videos about the subject, and as I began to look for them, I began to understand why. There are a lot of different ways to match the driven element of a Yagi antenna to a coaxial feed line. A lot of different ways. Generally, when you a, a dipole antenna, half-wave dipole antenna in free space at resonance has an impedance of about 72 to 73 ohms purely resistive, which is a pretty decent match for 50 ohm coaxial cable and a nearly perfect match for 75 ohm coaxial cable. However, when you add parasitic elements such as a reflector and one or more directors to a dipole antenna in order to get a Yagi, the, the, although the reactance pretty much remains absent, you may have to trim the length a little bit to get resonance uh, for the driven element. The feed point resistive part of the impedance goes way down and uh, the match is no longer so very good. You can overcome that to some extent by using a folded dipole rather than a half wave ordinary dipole. Use a half wave folded dipole for the driven element that will increase the impedance by a factor of four from whatever it is, the resistive part of the impedance. So if it, if it drops to 20 ohms, say, then you're going to increase it by a factor of 4 to 80 ohms for that Yagi antenna's driven element. Remember that in these examples, the driven element must be insulated from the boom of the antenna and also from the supporting mast of the antenna. It must exist as a dipole all by itself as if all of everything else was made out of wood or something like that, except, of course, the uh, parasitic elements. Come to think of it, it wouldn't be that bad of an idea to use uh, PVC tubing for the boom of a Yagi antenna. I've never heard of that done, but if, you can, if it's not too large of a Yagi antenna, it might work. But I thought... I've never seen any articles or videos or online publications, anything in a book about feeding a, the driven element of a Yagi antenna with open wire balanced line. Now, of course, if your open wire is 450 ohms and your feed point impedance at your, uh, at your dipole uh, for the driven element of the Yagi is only 22 and a half ohms, say, uh, you're going to have a 20 to one standing wave ratio on that open wire line. That's pretty high even for open wire. But if you make a folded dipole out of it, out of the driven element, you can make the you can reduce the mismatch by a factor of four. So instead of 20 to one, now you're only going to be dealing with five to one. And with open wire line, good open wire line, that's not so bad at HF, high frequencies, such as 20, uh, 17, 12, 15, 10 meters, maybe even 40 meters. That's not such a bad mismatch. And really good open wire line, uh, although difficult to find in stores nowadays, can be built uh, using the, I believe it would be the March issue of QST magazine. There's an article on page 30 
I, I don't know, they predate them so much now. I just got my QST, and on page 30, there's a, an article for building low-loss open wire line. I've done it myself, and I made a video or two about that. You can sometimes find it at ham fests, usually spaced about one inch with plastic spacers. Uh, but anyway, if you can find low-loss open wire line and use a folded dipole antenna for the driven element of the Yagi and make sure that antenna is insulated completely from the boom and from the supporting mast of the antenna, you, that ought to work pretty well. You will need a transmatch at your station to obtain the 50 ohm purely resistive unbalanced uh, impedance that the transmitter wants to see but most transmatches will handle that kind of standing wave ratio uh, provided they're designed for open wire line uh, feed to the antenna. Uh, Palstar, I keep touting them, makes a couple of good transmatches that work very well for open wire line and they are truly open wire balance line designs. So that's what I do. I have a Palstar transmatch right now uh, and if I were planning to put up a Yagi for say 15 meters I would uh, and if I were planning to build it I would go with open wire feed line and a folded dipole for the driven element. Now these are, these are just brainstorms. I'm not going to give you dimensions or construction details in a video like this because number one, my mind is getting too feeble thanks to the prescription drugs that I've been placed on and thanks to my advancing age and my attitude also that why, why, why worry about all these complications with antennas when you can do it in a simple, though perhaps um, unusual way? You know, simple is unusual nowadays, isn't it? Everything seems to be so complicated. Well, you can make it simple. I, that's what I would try uh, if I were going to make a 15 meter, say, five element Yagi antenna. One reflector, uh, three directors, and a driven element comprising a folded dipole, half wavelength, insulated from the boom and the mast, and fed with open wire transmission line, preferably uh, 300 ohm, uh, the lowest impedance you can manage for open wire transmission line. Uh, Again, look at, look at page 30 of the most recent issue of QST. And as, as, I, as I said, things change nowadays. For all I know now, they're sending out the June issue already. I, I, I wish I'd brought it and had it in front of me, but I believe uh, it's most likely the March uh, 2020 issue of QST. Make that kind of open wire and use it to feed your driven element of your Yagi antenna and remember to keep the driven element insulated from the boom and from the mast. That ought to work. Just a brainstorm from Stan Gibalisco W1GV saying 73 and so long which regardless of antenna type or feed line type always translates into Da-da-da-da-da-da.